Monday morning, we're set to go, set to work. Oh, yes. <laughs> and it's time for Business Half Hour, a minute past eight o'clock. It's Bukola and Ifanyo on your radio. Mm-hmm. Business Half Hour brought to you in collaboration with um, Narrow Metrics. Metrics, Nigeria Limited. We're not alone. Uh, we have two Ugos on the other side of, of this. Good morning, guys. Ugo, Ugo. I think you should start. Morning. <laughs> Hi, right, morning, morning. Ugo and Ugo Enterprises. <laughs> Just give me this morning. We'll just see All right, Lagos. Good morning. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Business Half Hour. Uh, we do this every every Monday, eight thirty. Uh, to drive from home to your workplace, or whether you're at home watching, uh, sorry, listening um, to this program. You can actually be watching as well if you're part of this uh, part of our Zoom radio. Uh, we're also on Zoom. Just check any in our metrics uh, social media channel and you can get the zoom link and you zoom right into the show uh we have an amazing guest today on the show and we're, i'm super proud to have him. it's not every time you have a celebrity on the show you know what i mean like somebody right. who, <laughs> who right. is a namesake but you know you know some names are some names eh? because uh, there are some names that are very very like you know <laughs> when you hear it you like to associate your name with that name <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lagos. So we have on the show today Ugumoye. Uh, Ugumoye is a fashion uh, uh, icon already in Nigeria. Um, I mean, it's it's a household name. I don't think it's it's something that needs it's someone who needs uh, a lot of introduction. Uh, but I'm gonna let him do it himself, like we usually do on this program. Uh, so uh, we'll go set it up. Who are you? Let Lagos know who you are. <laughs> well, my name is Ugo Chukumoye. Um. I'm from Delta, Delta State, to be precise, you know. So um, I am the chief innovator. Some people say creative director of Ugo Monye, the fashion brand. So I call it Ugo Monye, the tailoring company, you know. So I'm a, I'm a tailor, I'm a fashion designer, image consultant. I'm, every, I'm, I'm certified in every aspect, but I prefer to call myself a tailor. So I don't know if that answers your question. <laughs> That's very so modest i i think that uh <laughs> if i maybe you want to do him justice on his profile what do you think uh, i mean the, the man has said it himself you know that's that's why you know people always downplay the things <laughs> but it's okay, it's okay. We, we take humility here too <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right lego so we're very glad to have gomoyo gomoyo is a top designer uh in the fashion nigerian industry and is the owner of the Millwood Fashion Company, Ugo Moy. I'm sure a lot of you who are into fashion uh, know his name already. Um, he's he's uh, basically dressed a lot of popular celebrities uh, in town and uh, caters to um, higher middle class Nigerians. So if you're if you're somebody looking for the latest in fashion design, he's right here. But today on this show, he's going to be giving us his story, and I'm sure a lot of you are excited to want to know how he has you know risen risen to the top of fashion uh, in Nigeria. It's not every time you have somebody who, you know, just, you know, get, come out there. I, interesting thing is that I was looking at your bio and you actually like read fine and applied arts, you know, and then you're like, you just applied all that knowledge, you know, into fashion. So it's just, it's just incredible. So uh, we're just going to be going, you know, diving right straight into the, uh, into the show. Um, how did you start? Like, how did you pivot into fashion? Was it, was this something that you've always done or did you have like a nine to five job and then one day you just woke up and said, that's it, I'm done. How did it, how did it happen? Okay, my, my mom was in fashion. She had a, my, had a fashion line when, while I was growing up. Then um, when I got into the university, I wanted to, I, was, I, was, I studied business administration because I wanted to do business. I wanted to become an importer, exporter. So that was, <laughs> you know, so when I got into yeah. university, I, I was studying business admin. But along the line, I started, um, I started reading books about your calling, your purpose, things like that. And, mm. and because I'm gifted in, I'm an artist and I draw, I paint, but I never wanted to do that for a living because at that time there was no glory in it, you know? Yeah. There was no glory in, you know, in being an artist, all you see is maybe Mara's picture and Tinubu's picture on the roadside. I know, and, right? <laughs> you know, put his phone number. <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not, it's not as compared to now. But that, that was that time. So that was the way I was looking at it. So I said, no, 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 no. My dad was a businessman. I, I think that's where my eyes, you know. 
So while I was in school, started reading books about it, and and I found out that somehow your purpose in like your your, your calling is tied to your gift and your mm. talent. Mm. You know. Mm. So I started. I mean, you know how you see people dress, and you be like, no, no, no. Why why is this thing like this? Why can't we do it this way? So at that time, my mom's fashion business had gone on that. But so there was a time I I went home during one of the vacations in school, I went home and I told her that, is it possible to still link up with one of your tailors? Do you have their contact? She said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we called like two of them, brought them in. We brought out some of our old machines, put it in the living room. And I said, uh, you know, the things I was thinking about while I was in school, I said, bringing it to reality, you know, and with them. So wow. that was how it's pretty much started you know so that was i mean that was it for me and from there it went on the name has changed has evolved from different <laughs> names to what it is now <laughs> <laughs> so that was pretty much how it started oh yeah so, so tell us what, what was it called when you started what was, what was the fashion company called okay it was cuc it was CUC uh, fashion it was cuc fashion uh, cuc fashion is um um the names of my the first letters of my siblings so it's Chukuka, Isioma, Ugo, Chukuche, Meli, Morgan, oh. and Ifoma. Then it went from CUC, it now went to U Garden. I see. That, uh, Ugo Modern Design. Then from <laughs> U Garden, it went to Ugo Modern. So it has had three different uh, names, you know. So it evolved. So what's but I think Ugomoy has kind of stuck, though. I mean, yeah. it, it's kind of yeah. stuck out there. Yeah, so it's not just like a regular name now. It's, it's actually a brand on its own. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, everybody always has this epiphany moment, right? And I guess for you, it was just that light bulb, like, look, why don't I just go into this? But in terms of your, your business itself, when did you know that God looks like I have something going on here? Like, this is looking like an amazing business. When did that happen? Or when do you think that happened? Okay, for me, for me, from day one, from day one, I knew that because of the, you know, I, I, I'd read books, and I'd meditated, I'd prayed to God. I've done, I've, I've done every, you know. So in my mind, because I want to do something that I'm at peace with. You know, even if there's no money coming in, nobody can say, I was wrong with you because I'm smiling. People are still asking me for money, even though I don't even have money. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? I'm smiling, I'm happy because you can't tell on my face because I'm actually happy doing what I'm doing. So even if, I, I did a lot of, I mean, I mean, I, I can remember, there was, uh, there was never a time Money was a factor for me, ever, not once. So for me, it was just that, you know, mm -hmm. because once you are doing something you are happy doing, it's really not a job. It's really not a job. So for me, I've, exactly. always, known exactly. that, I've always known that this is what I wanted to do. Whether it's jam today, or in jam tomorrow, I was going, you know, the way they say, the way the fish cannot live outside water, that was the way I cannot live outside fashion. So I did, I did um, um, strategy consulting right after NYC, you know, so I was already work, working for a strategy consulting company. I was doing pretty okay, but at some point I said to myself, that man, I need to, I need to move because there was no fulfillment, even with mm. all the money I was making. Well, I thought I was making money at the time compared to my peers. You know, but there was no fulfillment. So I had to, I mean, I mean what I just said, you know, I can't do this anymore. I just had to put send in my resignation. But, but, but in moving, uh, so, yeah, but when you started, was there any time like in that whole process in the early, in the, in the early years that you just realized, man, the money ruling in God, I never actually thought I can make this much money. Like, I didn't think this was a good business. When did that moment happen? When do you think that moment happened to you? It has never happened. Even till now. <laughs> Are you sure? Yes. Wow, really? Oh, Even till now, it has it. never happened. <laughs> even till now, it hasn't happened. I, I mean, I, I'm making my, well, even till now, it hasn't happened. It, it, I don't know how to explain it. Because what I'm seeing, what I saw before I started is not what I'm seeing now. So you know you know how you are seeing something great in terms of you know a global global brand that not one human being can own. I've not yet seen it yet. So I've not seen mm. I'm not wowed by anything that I'm experiencing right now. 
But mm. there's still some, mm. you have you have some achievements across. Uh, yes, the- I thank God. I thank God for where I am now. I really am grateful to God for where I am now. But I, it's, I've I've not. I know that this is not how how I started, mm. but my eye is big. <laughs> it's <Yeah. laughs> still, you know. Uh, that's true. Ugo, Ugo, there's someone listening to you right now who's thinking, okay, do you actually have to know how to sew to be a fashion designer? Sorry? Do you have to know how to sew, you know, to do it yourself, to be a fashion designer? Well, um, in Nigeria, because, because the Nigerian fashion industry is a, is, is, is a growing fashion industry, we're not as, um, as structured as every other I mean, I was not as structured as the, 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 I mean, Milan or any other structured fashion, proper, proper fashion industry, because there's a lot, is the, the, the value chain spreads across different things, you know, so Ooh. you, you but in Nigeria, we, you have to be able to do everything because you are building your business, you are building your business, you are not only building your business, you are building the industry. So mm. it's all like, mm. maybe you go to, I mean, there was a time I actually wanted to pause in Nigeria and say, okay, you know what, because I was doing too many things at the same time. So my head wanted to explode. I was like, ah, I'm the one that is the creative director. I'm the one that is the chief marketer. I'm the one that is this. I'm the one that is that. But that is what, that's what it is in Nigeria because it's not structured yeah. yet. People, people, have not, people are still in school. They have, they, in their mind, they, they can't even think about it, that when they leave school, I want to work as the chief, a chief buyer of so, so, so company. Or I want to work as a creative or, or, or a creative director at social company. Or I want to work as a machinist of this company. Or I want to work as a you know there are different things you can be, but because the industry is still just is still in its teething stage and it's still getting structured, that's why people are asking that question. In Nigeria, you have to do in order to own because for example, let me explain. You can be a fashion designer. I can hire you as a fashion designer to work for me. But because everybody don't want to work for you, everybody wants to be you. Yes. Mm. Everybody wants to be you. They don't want to work for you. Mm. So they will just, they will, they are trying to leverage on you, on your own network or your own brain to just start up their own because that's the average. Um, Thinking, um, what, the, the average yeah. We're all bullish. Yeah, yeah. You want to be that you know, nobody wants to be a part of the success story of that person forever because, ooh, yep. <laughs> exactly. They all do their own. They all, everybody feels they can do what you're doing. And the honest truth is that you can, it's, not, it's not possible. That's not the way the world was designed. Everybody can be at the top. Yeah. I, I, you know what you just said now that kind of resonates with me? And uh, I, I never had thought about it this way. The way that our academic system is set up now uh, is not really set up to feed, you know, the, the kind of industries that we're trying to create, the industries that are creating the new kind of jobs. Like you said now, you don't have anybody who, is, who, who goes to school to want to be a stylist or who goes to school to want to be a tailor or something. Like, there's, it's not just there. And so what yeah. you find out is that you're, you're just bringing people on who maybe have the passion, or maybe are just looking for a job and you have to like basically mold them mold into them. that kind of what you want. And then at the end of the day, some of them actually want to be you, like you said, yeah. or are just, you know, looking for money and, and not necessarily passionate about what they are doing or inspired. Yeah. So interesting stuff there. So, I mean, and, and that kind of takes us to our next question, right? Um, st- um, um, competition. Actually, should we go into competition now or let's just go into the market in general. Let's talk about the market in general. So there are a lot of fashion houses out there, right? So many. And like you said, everybody just wants to be you or be someone else, right? That, that is as popular as you are. What is that, that industry like at the moment? Do you think that uh, there's been a lot of progress made over the, last, over the last, let's say, decade or so? And do you see yourself, you know, staying here for another decade? Right, because you've been doing this for about a decade now. So the industry has been there over the last decade or two. This metamorphosis, uh, it, it morphed basically. Uh, maybe not as big as a lot of people still want, but it's you know, done pretty well. Now, do you see yourself staying here another 10 years, you know, doing a lot better than you're doing at the moment? Yes. Um, 
Yes, absolutely. Because I, mean, I always say, um, the world evolves, the industry evolves. The, I mean, just imagine fashion in Nigeria 10 years ago. I mean, think about it. Nobody mm. say, I'm, I want to study fashion. I want to go to fashion school. Your parents will first <laughs> carry you and they will use your prayer points first. Uh, <laughs> but now you even see some people saying that, I mean, they are, I mean I'm a tailor. Because mm. people, I mean, things are changing, you know. So for me, I see myself being like I'm putting things in place to be here as long as forever. Even, for, even when I die, it's still here. And the only way for me and the only way to even do that is what we've been saying is that the industry is a baby industry. It's growing. The more with time, things will be falling in place. The structure will be set. And we know me. I don't think me, I can be heading Ugomoye creative team in 10 years time. Mm. Because my brain is not going to be thinking about what the millennials are thinking in that time. And if you cannot create something that they and every other person can wear, it means that my, my, my brand will phase with this generation. When they are dying, my brand will be dying. So in order to keep reinventing yourself, you need fresh minds. You need fresh people that can take the brand to the next level. So now that we're saying the business is not structured, the business will ultimately, as, as, time, <clears throat> as time goes on, things will be put in place. See all the fashion industries are talking about in different parts of the world. It was, it, it, it's, we've done a great job from where we're coming from. You, do you understand what I'm saying? They've, sure. they, it's taken them years to be where they are today. Yeah, you're right. You're right about it's that. Decades, years. actually. Yeah. So you can imagine us, I mean, and we are, I mean, we are trying. We are really, really doing a great job. So I'm sure that by then, Hugo Moye will be a sought-after company to say, ah, I want to be a creative director for that company. So people will go to school and say, I, I want to, one of my dream jobs is to be a creative director in Hugo Moye. They will go abroad and come back and say, because now the industry would have been structured. And apart from that, us as a company would have done our own homework very, very well to make your company a much sought after company, you know. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Good stuff, Ugo. Um, if I, it looks like we've gone past half hour. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, quarter of an hour. Do you want to go? Are we going on a break now? Sure, yes. All right, Ugo, we're going to be back in a bit. Uh, we'll just go on a, on a two minutes break and we'll be back. Okay. All right. So, business app uh, here on Classic FM 97.3. We have Ugo Dre in the studio with us, Ugo Monye as well. And uh, we're talking fashion designing this morning. Back to you, Ugo. All right, guys. Uh, welcome back. Uh, it's been lovely having a good morning on the show. Uh, good morning is a fashion designer. If you guys remember, remember that very, very popular Ibuka outfit that made noise back then? This is the guy behind it, and he's been behind a lot of other, uh, you know, iconic, iconic dresses out there and, 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 and clothes for men. And Ugo, welcome back, back on the show. We're going to delve a bit into, into the money side of this now, because a lot of people... Uh, you know, a lot of our listeners are, are, are wondering, like, okay, so like this fashion thing, right? How do people actually like, you know, how, what's the what's the money like? Uh, how do you monetize? Is it just by selling what you wear or runway, or is there something else? So, you know, talk to Lagos about it. What's the monetization like for your kind of business? I mean, there are different aspects of. I mean, fashion is so big. There's photography. There's uh, mm. runway. There's there's styling. There's uh, it's, it's, it's very, very broad, but because it's still not structured, people, I mean, we're not, we're, people are not sure of the different aspects and what they are actually really doing and how they can actually really make money. But let me just talk about the ones that are very popular, like what I do. I mean, I'm a tailor slash fashion designer. So people, me, how do I make money from it? I make clothes for people. Sometimes I don't, I don't even have to make. Sometimes I will, I'll just design and people have to pay me for designing. For oh, me wow. to design is more expensive. For me, is, for me to design is more expensive than for me to make. Because someone can tell me that, ah, I want to make this outfit. And for example, if they, this outfit cost, ordinarily costs 20,000 naira, I'll just say it's 20,000 naira. So, but they can tell you, no, I want you to make something special for me. When they now tell me, I want you to make something special for me, I'll say, okay, no problem. For me to think, use my brain to think. <laughs> you know, I can say it's 50,000, and, you know, and, and they don't budge. I mean, they, they, I mean, because that's the value I've placed on my own brain. 
you know. If you say you want me to create something for you, I'll create. But it, normally, once people come at me, you say, I want you to make something. I'll just say, okay, check. Go through our, uh, our, our, our designs, anything that you like there, anything that you see there. We can even just to even sit down, to have a sit down and consult because that time, well, we've been able to value our time. So we just don't want you to just come and, uh, I mean, because some, a lot of times, there are a lot of jokers out there who call you and say, oh, they want to do this. All they want to do is to pick your brain and go. So what we do now, we just say, okay, you know what, for me to sit down, you know, you have to commit, pay a certain amount of money, which is called, which in quotes is consultation. However, okay. if we end up dealing, the money goes into your clothes. Mm. So that way you have saved the ones that are serious and the ones that are not serious. Mm. You know, so for me, there are different aspects, even me as a person. I mean, even just to show up in somewhere, I mean, sometimes people have to, you know, mm. They have to pay for it. You know, so there are different ways of making monetizing it. There's the clothing aspect, which everyone does. You you design, you say this is how much you're going to this how the material goes for maybe twenty thousand. You say, Okay, I want to say after making it, we we'll make it uh, sell it uh, thirty five thousand. Or whichever way. You just need to understand what is going into the clothes in terms of the quality, the cost of production, and how much you are willing to mark up. And so, but, but go, let, let, uh, let me ask you this question though. How, how, when, how come for a lot of Nigerian fashion, right? Uh, yes. You can't find it like, like I can't go to the mall, for example, and go into one of these you know, fashion stores and just see an Ugomoye attire there. Why are we not at that level yet? As I said, no, you can growing. just go and see a Tommy shirt. Oh, okay. No, as I said, it's growing because there, there, there are some places you can go to and you find other brands there, like some Nigerian brands there. Yeah, it's actually mm. there are some there are some stores you go to that you find um, other. I mean, that they carry different brands, you know. So All things right, so are. Equal. Let, let, let's talk about challenges, right? Um, I mean, every business has challenges, and and on this show, Bukola Ifanya and I, we've heard a lot of entrepreneurs, and they just tell us the kind of challenges that they face, and it's always interesting to hear them because other people are learning as well and knowing how you navigate through these challenges. So. What would you say are your top challenges and how do you like, you know, weave through it? Me, my, I mean, top challenge is just the human capacity. That's my uh, people that work with me, you know. It's just for them to be on the same wavelength. You know, sometimes tailors just feel, they don't, they, I mean, people in Nigeria, especially, let me talk about tailors, they don't take their job. They think it's, um, they don't take it seriously. They don't know how important mm. being a tailor is. You know, like when you see a tailor in the UK, and he tells you, when you ask him, what do you do? The guy will tell you proudly that I'm a tailor. I, I, I work with, I mean, very proud about it. But in Nigeria, you see them, they don't even come to work. They come to work whenever they like. They feel that Monday, they feel that Monday is not a working day. Wow. <laughs> you know, they feel that work starts on Tuesday. You know, so there's that seriousness that is just not there. And you're wondering that, how can you grow a global, how can you get to a global yeah. level like this? It's very tough. That's when you now start seeing people considering bringing fly people from different parts of the world to come and work in Nigeria for them because their work ethics is different from that of us in Nigeria. But it's sad because people, I mean, people want to do whatever it is to make sure their business doesn't fall. But how would you, when you have people in Nigeria, you're thinking I in your mind. Is to bring... It's because over time we've looked down on certain jobs. So people don't even know that what they're doing is worth being proud about. You know, there's dignity yes. in labor. We don't preach that message much. We need to preach more of that message that there's dignity in labor. So you'd be proud to say whatever it is you do or who you are. Yeah, I agree. You know, that's why for me, that's, yeah, that's why I started calling myself a tailor a long time ago. Because there was a time I went out with my wife and we met, we met some lady and the lady said, oh, babe, look, um, me so so person, she's a tailor like you. The girl just said, excuse me, I'm a fashion designer. <laughs> I was like, I was like oh, so she meant no harm, man. She, I mean, me, I'm a tailor. That was why she introduced me. I mean, she didn't mean to, you know, no, no, no offense, you know. So later, the girl started asking people around that, you know, when they, when they now told her who I was, she, she now kind of like came back to me. I was smiling and everything. You know, because this is someone that was, excuse me, I'm a fashion designer. I said, no, me, I'm a tailor, no vex. <laughs> you know, don't be angry. You know, because anything you do with your hands, you need, as you said, dignity in labor. You need to be super proud of it. 
So those are, I mean, yeah, and yeah. then then even like I remember when things, in terms of my pop, the popularity of the brand, shot up. My rents, my rents too shot up straight up. Interested. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so you can imagine the kind of challenges we're facing in this country. Imagine so as you're growing, you know, sure. you realize, but that's what they ah. you know, More money, more problems. Oh Yo. my God, we've, we've basically come towards the end of this show. It's incredible. Uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed, enjoyed chatting with you. Going 30 minutes just runs so fast on this program. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, but like, like, we like to end this program with a little bit of, uh, with a byline. What's that thing, what watch word that resonates in your mind all the time that you like to say to yourself? Uh, you want to you wanna just share that with Lagos? Yeah, there's, n- there's nowhere, there's no shortcuts to anywhere that is worth going to. Mm. That's There's deep, no man. Short, That's deep, that brother. Thing. That's deep, brother. Uh, because people think you think you're fine. Like, no yeah. it, 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 it's, it hits hard. Honestly. Yeah. That's deep. Mm-hmm. All right, Lagos. Uh, you heard that. There's no shortcuts to anywhere that is worth going. Uh, thank you so much, Ugo Chukumoy. We've got a good morning on the show. Uh, it's been an amazing time. As usual, if you want to listen to this program again, uh, you're going to have a podcast version out uh, tomorrow or Naira Metrics, uh, you know, on channels. Also, you can also get to watch this playback as well again. Bukola Ifani, uh, that's our show for this week. All right. Thank you, Ugo. Thank All you. Right. Thank you, guys. Have a good Thanks so much.